Welcome to Real Physics. Today I'm talking about the most interesting ether theory and this is the theory of the incompressible ether of James McCulloch in 1839. Part of this is contained in my paper in the Journal of Applied Mathematics and Mechanics published last year in the special issue on mechanical models of electrodynamics. That means the ether is not such a bad idea and to appreciate this you have to think about also of defects in this in such a elastic continuum such as screw dislocations you might want to watch my first video ether and relativity on that topic of defects but today we are going right into the matter with McCulloch's theory of the incompressible ether and this is contained in this fantastic book a history of the theories of ether and electricity by Sir Edmund Whittaker and of course there is a, an entire story of smart people dealing with this idea that you could make a mechanical model of electrodynamics of the electrical phenomena which by the way were not that uh, old at the time uh, we're talking about Ørsted uh, discovering the connection between electricity and magnetism in 19, in 1820. So people were curious to explain these things, and well, one of this uh, one of these approaches was McCulloch's idea. And you need to think about uh, what is an elastic continuum. And just imagine a piece of rubber or a piece of elastic material and you can do various distortions you can compress it and you can uh, apply a shear stress or you can even try to rotate one uh, end uh, surface uh, with respect to the other and all this of course needs some complicated mathematics and you need of course vector analysis a background but, but I try to explain things in a visual manner, so at least to get interested. So the concept you need to understand is not that difficult. It's the displacement vector. And just imagine that from an undisturbed state, this displacement vector in every point of the material brings you to the new somehow distorted state. Okay? So, and this displacement vector usually denoted as u with three components in x, y and z direction and the components are called uh, u, v and w. Then you can do vector analysis and that's what McCulloch also proposed and you know that the so-called curl of a vector field is just something associated with rotation. Then you can also consider the divergence of a vector field if the, the it spreads so to speak or so if something is compressed this would be associated with the divergence of the of the displacement field we are coming back to this but well the proposal of McCulloch is essentially that you can describe the electric fields as a rotation of volume elements and the magnetic field as a velocity of a uh, of this material it sounds a little bit strange but uh, just follow along it, it's going to be very interesting one important thing is here i mean if you do continuum mechanics you usually have shear distortions rotations and you have also compression but if you allow for compression then you have not only shear waves in that elastic continuum but also longitudinal waves, compression waves, and that necessarily would imply two different sound velocities. The shear velocity is always smaller than the velocity of the, of the compression wave. All this would mess up any reasonable description. So what we have to postulate at this point, and McCulloch did this, we speak about an incompressible if you forget about all the longitudinal waves, we just have transverse waves. And of course, then the analog is this uh, velocity of transverse sound would be something like the speed of light in a model of space-time. The interesting thing here is that you almost get 
everything of Maxwell's theory, of Maxwell's equations here. If you, as I say, postulate, call you the, the rotation of the displacement field is associated with the electric field, then you have again curl, that means curl of the electric field is, as you know, related to the time derivative of the magnetic field, and you see here double derivative, but the single derivative would be the magnetic field. So here we encounter Maxwell's first equation. And this would be, this is uh, the first equation. Then of course you have the divergence of the of this velocity by definition would vanish, so we have no problem with the with the Maxwell equation divergence of the magnetic field vanishing. And also very interestingly, you get the rest of Maxwell's equations in empty space if you just apply vector analysis. It's a matter of definition here. Necessarily the divergence of any of the of the curl of any vector field vanishes and also you can change the time and spatial uh, differentiation so um, curl of the of the temporal derivative would be the temporal derivative of the curl that would imply that the time derivative of the electric field is related to the rotation of the magnetic field which is part of uh, one of Maxwell's equations. Now I mean what's the problem with this theory? It has a couple of shortcomings and one thing is if you look closer at this uh, vector field then you really realize that um, it's a linear theory. What does that mean? If you visualize a divergence of this um, displacement field such as uh, vectors uh, becoming greater the uh, further you move from the center so you ha would have a derivative, a positive derivative of this one x component if you, that increases if you uh, go in x direction, the y component increases if you go in y direction and so on. So this would be an expansion and this vector field would be a compression of the material. And as I said, this should be excluded physically, but the problem is the uh, vector analysis condition divergence uh, u equals zero for the incompressible case that does not hold for real materials and for real materials you have to do nonlinear continuum mechanics which is more sophisticated and you need to introduce another quantity which is called the deformation gradient well it's a little bit technical but this uh, ux would indicate the derivative of the x component of the displacement in x direction. This would indicate the, the y derivative of the y component and so on. And in first approximation this is equivalent to divergence u because if you add up ux and y in vy and wz then you have the divergence but in the real non-linear case you would have to consider the determinant of that deformation gradient and if this is one then you have the real incompressible case. This is one of the problem um, but there is even a bigger problem because as I said it wonderfully works for uh, Maxwell's equations in empty space which were by the way found much later but people in that period all, all, all people were trying to formulate electrodynamics with these mechanical ideas but yeah you have no electric charges it's really sad because from the definition as I said it would follow that there are no charges but you have charges and of course Gauss law tells you that the divergence of the electric field is equivalent to the density of charges divided by uh, the epsilon naught and so on and of course in Ampere's law you have also this uh, current, these uh, charges, uh, flowing charges and you absolutely need that. I mean Maxwell ingeniously introduced that second term and that second term is pretty pretty well explained by McCulloch but you don't have charges so it, it's, it's not a good theory. So we have two seemingly unsurmountable problems, but it turns out that the one problem might be the solution of the other one. Because as I said, uh, you need to do 
nonlinear continuum mechanics you need to do replace the divergence of the displacement vector with the determinant of the deformation gradient and you also need to distinguish or to reflect upon what is a rotation the rotation that we have in mind if we think intuitively something like that is not the curl of the vector field precisely because the curl of the vector field describes also something like a shear and rotation is still something different so long story short there is an idea there is a solution at least there is an idea if you go to nonlinear continuum mechanics and if you consider also defects keep in mind that of course uh, Mikola couldn't think about defects they were uh, discovered 100 years later and this uh, defects such as dislocations or other topological disturbances could take the role of particles and this is important because all ether theories at the end of the 19th century were discarded because people believed that an external substance had moved through the ether instead if you think about disturbances this problem vanishes and in, as a matter of principle it is possible to describe space-time and relativity with such an elastic medium now just to give you an idea how could we possibly arrive at such a charge what we need is that uh, rotation that means an electric field coming out from one source okay so you have one electric field uh, turning in this direction and uh, in the opposite direction turning in the other direction that you something uh, you would need something like a source of an intrinsic rotational strain and there are indeed some very interesting ideas I will present you in my next video but it's going to be a little bit complicated so just enjoy this yeah very insightful theory invented almost 200 years ago you can find more on this in my paper what can physics learn from continuum mechanics and a more general remark I'd like to make is that the idea that you want to understand nature the laws the elementary laws from from first principles is a tradition of uh, well the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century unfortunately a bygone era if we look at fundamental physics my personal point of view is that we do not have real fundamental physics in the last 70 years or so and this is a consequence of a change in scientific culture from the european tradition of thinking that wanted to explain things from first principles and the more american principle of just going to applied physics which came to dominate the world after world war ii and this is discussed in my book make physics great again there's also a mention of the ether theories and yeah read this book and read old books like uh, Whittaker's History of the Theories of Ether and Electricity. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to like it and if you're interested in fundamental physics subscribe to this channel.